Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to today's talk on the nature of science and the scientific method. This is one of the most important parts um, of the entire class this year because we're going to do so many labs uh, that it's really important to have a pretty solid understanding of what science is and how we go about um, experimenting. So the scientific method. So we'll we're going to kind of go through here the the basic pieces of what it means and follow it up with a little example the idea of an experiment is to try to find out if things that you observe and ideas you have um you know is it what happens do you think that um, certain thoughts you have um, based on observations or you wonder why about something uh, you want to find out so you do an experiment and um, just so you know you could grab your textbook at any time there's some of this stuff is in there as well so you can have that as a resource um, so if you want it to have it you can go to the second half of chapter one and and find the scientific method part and that could be a little resource for you as well so let's jump right in when um, you decide to do an experiment they don't ever just pop out of nowhere all science is driven and I mean this driven by observation okay and observation is a really really critical part in by observing I don't just mean with our eyes you could do it with touching with hearing um, your taste your smell um, all of our senses lead us to observation and we will observe from nature certain things that happen so you notice things over and over again let's say walking through the woods and you just start to wonder why does that happen so you're thinking about it you're watching some things you get a thought hey maybe this is why it happens so there you're starting to really develop your hypothesis and that's what good science is hypothesis testing you want to find out if you're right so in order to say I think this happens because blah 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 you design an experiment to test if you're right okay and I'm gonna use a tiny example right here it's really you know pretty obvious but if I say hey I noticed that all plants grow outside and they grow in the Sun something must be about the light why is light so important and I think that light is a very important aspect to plant growth so I decide does light have any effect on plant growth and so now I've made my hypothesis that I think light in the absence of light plants will not grow so I've made a statement now I need to test it I need to back it up that's the thing about science if you make a statement if you say the way things happen you've got to have data to back it up so I've got this hypothesis I want to build an experiment but I can't just go and throw a bunch of plants into a cupboard and say that's it and then just see what happens there's a method there's a series of steps I have to follow in order for it to fall under the guidelines of what science is I have to develop some groups I have to have a control group I have to have an experimental group these two groups are going to be critical for me to be able to answer my hypothesis and find out if I have any evidence to support it or not my control group is going to be the group that I'm going to compare my results to so this is the group that I compare everything to okay without this I can't say if light has any effect if I throw a bunch of plants in the dark if I don't have any plants growing out in the light I need to have both otherwise I have no idea so my control group that's going to be the one that has the absence of any um, variable that's been changed it's going to just be the way nature intended my experimental group now that's the one we have fun with that's where the change happens but we want to make sure that I only have one thing changed if you only have, if you have more than one thing changed then you don't know if the reason for the results was because of this or because of that so let's say again the light thing if I say I want to find out if light affects plant growth and I have a skunk cabbage growing on my windowsill and I take a daisy and put it in the dark okay 
yeah, I might have light affect it, but could my results be because I had one plant was a skunk cabbage and the other plant was a daisy? Sure. So the only thing I want to make sure I change is the amount of light that I'm using. So that's what we refer to as the independent variable. What am I going to change that one thing? In this case, light. Light is my independent variable. Everything else, all other variables must be the same. I want to make sure that the type of soil I use is the same, the type of plant is the same, how long they're in the light and the dark, how much water I give and when I give it, the temperature, all of these things have to remain the same. And the only thing I want to alter is the amount of light between my two groups. So I get that one variable that's different. So when it's all said and done and I compile my results and I compile my results, I can have something to compare it to and I can say either yes or no, based on my data, light affects plant growth. And then I can draw some conclusions from that. And usually from there, that will stem further science. So it's kind of neat that way. So let's take a look at a little example. I have a hypothesis that I've made. We know that bacteriophages, cool word, huh? Bacteriophages kill E. coli. All right, so here's some things that might sound a little crazy. Holy crow, what's a bacteriophage? Bacteriophage is a virus. <coughs> Excuse me. And these are viruses that are very, very specific. They only infect bacteria. And in this case, my bacteria is E. coli and a very particular, really nasty strain of E. coli. And we have observed that this virus will actually infect and kill E. coli cells in a Petri dish in the lab. So maybe we're trying to develop a new form of an antibiotic. Instead of injecting with crazy medicines, let's inject with this virus that's only going to kill those bacteria cells. Seems like an easy way to get rid of the, the um, infection. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is, um, that's our hypothesis. We figure if they kill them in a Petri dish, they're going to kill them in mice. So we take mice and we get prepared to inject them with this bacteriophage after they've been infected um, with E. coli. And then we'll predict that those mice that have been infected with the E. coli but also injected with this bacteriophage will survive. And those that haven't been infected with the, you know, haven't been injected with the bacteriophage will die because of the harmful strain of E. coli. So we have to design our experiment totally based around these groups. Okay. And so I am going um, to take this hypothesis and prediction and design my experiment around that. So we establish a very large population of mice. We make sure that all these mice are of the same species. We want to make sure that they, um, that there's no difference in the mice. Perhaps we only deal with one gender at a time, but that shouldn't really be too much of a factor right now. So we get a large sample. We break them up into two groups of equal numbers and we have our control and we have our experimental group. Now our control group is going um, to be a group of 15 mice, our experimental group, 15 mice. Note the numbers are the same. Okay, We're going to inject into the right thigh of these mice E. coli. Into my experimental group, I'm going to inject E. coli into the right thigh of the mouse. Okay. I'm going to make sure they get the same amount of food. I'm going to make sure that they have the same living environments. Everything's going to be the same for these mice. But I'm going to take for these mice into their left thigh, I am going to inject the virus where these guys get no injection. And then <laughs> we let time do its thing and we find out what happens. After 32 hours, we know all of our little mice on this side have died. Sad. So they have all died because there's been nothing to combat the infection of the E. coli. Over here, we have all of our mice 
have survived. Yay, happy mice. Okay, and they're all alive. So perhaps this may be, um, you know, something that we can now use to combat E. coli infection. We have answered our hypothesis based on this experiment. So given this data, we can say we are able, you know, to say that yes, this um, bacteriophage was able to kill E. coli while in mice. Now, there's a lot of what ifs that can come from this and a lot of things to sort of tweak this same experiment and maybe um, refine it, maybe fine tune it a little more to find out some more, like how much. Notice that they were talking about an amount. Does that matter? Okay. Um, does it matter when they get injected? How far into the infection? Is there a certain point where it won't work anymore? So there's a lot of what ifs that come from this as well. So if you know, science will always drive further science. You could develop a whole new experiment just from the results you observe here. So what I want you guys to think about after you fill out uh, your WISC form is to consider the what ifs, okay? Are there some um, questions that you have? And this could be a great way to develop some of your hot questions um, for this. So part of your question aspect, you know, what would you change? Or what, uh, what do you think about this? Are there any questions you have about this experiment um, or things you might alter or things you might change a little bit? Because I want to throw this at you. Are there any treatments you could do with this experiment? Ooh, I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. We're going to talk about that in class. So, uh, start thinking about those things and um, you know we're gonna get right into this in class we're gonna have a great discussion and get further into what science is and how experiments are run because this is how we're gonna conduct all of our labs this year so uh, looking forward to seeing you in class and take care we'll see you next time